Karen Dalton. Welcome to Active Aging, a program devoted to exploring issues of importance to older people and people living with disabilities. Each month, we provide information and resources to help you live a healthy, satisfying, and independent life. For people who can no longer drive or take public transportation, getting around becomes a serious problem. This month, we'll focus on transportation resources for older people and people living with disabilities. We'll meet the Executive Director of SEM Community Transportation, We'll speak to a volunteer who drives older people to medical appointments. And as always, we'll meet our active person of the month. I'm here with Fred Woodington, who's a driver for SEM Community Transportation. Fred, how long have you worked for SEM? Eight and a half years. Oh, wow. And, um, and what kind of things do you do? Um, you know, what kind of rides do you give people? We give our clients rides to uh, uh, shopping, uh, senior centers. Uh, they go on a lot of day trips sometimes, take them there as well. Now, some of your clients you've helped for a really long time. Can you tell me, like, how long some of these people have been riding? I've taken some clients from the very beginning, and they, you know, they have like their own personality and so forth. They like you know, their grandparents, stuff like that, the way they treat you. Uh, that's that's wonderful. And um, and you're dropping off people today at the senior center. When why are they here? I guess they're here to do um, uh, basically they bingo here, and they have uh, breakfasts and so forth, and all the social clubs they have here. Yeah. Thank you, Fred. I'm here with Reed Cochran, Executive Director of SEM Community Transportation, which is an important part of our local transportation infrastructure. Reed, welcome to the program. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. That's great. Well, we're really interested to hear a little bit about sort of the local transportation mm -hmm. um, scene and um, some of the services that SEM provides. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, SCM Community Transportation was founded uh, 24 years ago by three communities, Somerville, Cambridge, and Medford, and it's one of the last standing nonprofit transportation organizations in the greater Boston area. Um, and it fills a really important niche in our landscape. Um, I think most people in, uh, in our communities are accustomed to using their personal vehicles or taking the T, taking the bus, taking the subway. Um, or maybe taking the ride. Beyond those options, there's really only taxi services available. So SCM's goal is to fill a really important gap for um, senior citizens and people with disabilities who really um, need other options other than what's available out there. So for example, to take uh, the ride, which is the MBTA service, um, you have to prove that you have a disability even if you're a senior citizen. And so there's a lot of, um, we believe that there's a lot of people in our communities who, while they don't quite qualify for the ride, shouldn't be taking two subways and a bus to get to yeah, the doctor's that's office. That's a challenge. Yeah, it's actually, it's a really special organization. Um, there aren't many like it across the country that are this old and that uh, provide as many rides as we do every month. And it's, become, it's going to become increasingly important as the population of senior citizens in our area grows. Yeah, no, I mm -hmm. think people would be really surprised to learn how many rides you actually give in a month. Mm -hmm. um, can you yeah. tell our audience? Yeah. <laughs> we, have, uh, we have 27 vehicles right now. I'm sure a lot of the audience has seen them. They're white with a big blue stripe. They say SCM on the side. And we provide 8,000 rides a month right now. That's amazing. Yeah, to um, adult daycare, to doctor's appointments, to grocery shopping, uh, meal sites, and occasionally social outings. And we really want to do a lot more sort of independent social transportation that's on the, on the radar for the future. Now, who are your big sources of funding? 
Uh, we get um, our adult daycare transportation, which is in the mornings and the afternoons, is our largest uh, source of funding that comes from Medicaid transportation. Um, we also get a lot of support from, from home health care agencies. Um, we get large grants from the communities of Somerville, Cambridge, and Medford, and smaller grants from some of the surrounding communities to do medical transportation. And that's probably our most popular service. It is where a senior can call in uh, to our reservations desk and make an appointment to get a ride to the doctor um, two weeks ahead of time. I see. Mm -hmm. And um, and how about um, other th some of the social transportation? Where are people going with that? To their um, we don't do as much social transportation as we like. A, a lot of it is to local councils on aging, uh, but we would like to expand our ability to take people um, take people on outings anywhere they'd like to go. Um, every holiday season, we do lights tours. Um, we try to take people shopping for the holidays. Uh, but we're very interested in expanding to be able to take people to the library or to their book club or to a class. And that's all on the radar for the future. Um, um, well, the need is definitely there. What are the mm -hmm. biggest challenges you face in trying mm -hmm. to expand your service? The biggest challenge is funding. Mm -hmm. um, the local municipalities are willing to fund uh, medical transportation, grocery store transportation, but there's not a lot of money left over for social transportation. And we really want to take uh, we really believe that if you're going to age independently, you need to be able to be mobile and go anywhere you want to go. If you want to volunteer, if you want to have a job, if you want to visit friends, you need a way to get there. There's a lot of pressure on um, our elderly to get rid of their car keys, mm -hmm. but there aren't many options for them once they do. Yes. Your only option is your family or the T or a very expensive and impersonal cab ride. And we want to grow to fill that niche. We want to be available to go wherever you want to go. So one of the things we're doing is we are going to start offering some private services where you could open an account uh, for yourself or you could open an account for a parent or someone that you're caring for and uh, you know basically buy a certain number of rides and whittle those down over time. And that'll that would be over be, the next six months or so. That would mm -hmm. be wonderful. I mean I think mm -hmm. people don't really realize that once you do give up your car that it can mm -hmm. be really challenging especially if you have some kind of physical impairment that mm -hmm. the T is supposed to be accessible but mm -hmm. um, it's not always mm -hmm. um, accessible to every destination. Right. Yeah. You know and the ride is an excellent service. Mm -hmm. It's a very large service. Um, mm -hmm. They have have a mandate to serve people with disabilities across Massachusetts, mm -hmm. basically, or, the, or the, the area that the MBTA serves anyway. SCM is a community-based service, mm -hmm. so we're able to provide something that's way more personal, way more intimate. Our, mm -hmm. our drivers get to know the riders, um, and, and we try to respond to what's needed locally as opposed to uh, the MBTA, which, because of the way they're funded, have to provide enormous volume of rides to a lot of people and they're not able to do it in such a um, a warm fashion as we are. Yeah, I know they faced many challenges. Mm -hmm. I know their service has, um, you know, really varied at times. Some people have said mm -hmm. it's excellent at times, and mm -hmm. then other people have faced real challenges where they're waiting around for a couple of hours yeah. for to get their pickup, yeah. and uh, that that's mm -hmm. really not acceptable for yeah. for an older yeah. person who yeah. needs to get someplace on time. Yeah, and you know they have they have made giant strides to improve their service, but I believe that, and SCM believes that more options is better. Right? There's no, why should you just have one place to go uh, for your transportation needs? There are things that the ride is very good at. There are things that SCM is very good at. And we want to be sort of the natural solution for someone who can no longer drive. Interesting. And for their families. And um, now one of the things I think people, mm -hmm. um, you know, if they're used to having their own car, they're mm -hmm. used to being independent, riding the T, it's a big mm -hmm. change to kind of mm -hmm. turn over these kind of kind of mm -hmm. control to another organization. And sometimes people uh -huh. are nervous about either having someone coming into their home or mm -hmm. being served by um, mm -hmm. someone, a stranger that they don't know. Now, mm -hmm. what do you do to screen your drivers and train them mm -hmm. to, you know, assure your, your mm -hmm. riders that they're going to be safe and mm -hmm. well taken care of? Well, one of the first things we do is we have a culture in our office where we recruit people who love to work with people with disabilities, who have a lot of respect for seniors. And uh, we do a very careful screening. We do uh, background checks, driving record checks on everybody, and then they go through a really, really rigorous training process. So everybody knows um, 
all of all of our uh, drivers have training in how to work with people who are developing Alzheimer's, for example, or dementia of some other kind. Uh, they understand wheelchairs. They know they understand safety inside and out, and they always provide a door-to-door -door service. So um, a, a lot of uh, transportation agencies they'll pick you up by the curb, but SCM picks you up at the door, and escorts you to the van and back. And for, for somebody who has um, mobility problems, who might have a walker um, or might be fearful of slipping on the ice, this is a really, really valuable piece That's of the service. Wonderful. Yeah, it's, it's back and forth. It's door to door. Um, it's really special. That's, mm -hmm. that's great. Now, um, mm -hmm. I know you are, you're, so you're dependent on um, mm -hmm. grants and mm -hmm. um, the uh, Medicaid funding. Mm -hmm. um, do you also do private fundraising? It sounds like that would be important mm -hmm. uh, to keep your organization going. Yeah, we're learning to do fundraising. Back when SCM was, was born, back, you know, 20, almost a quarter century ago, there was a lot of government funding for this. And so we never really had to learn how to raise money, hold fundraisers, so forth and so on. But uh, we're getting better at that. It's a big piece of what we're going to have to do as long as there's not money uh, readily available from our local cities anymore. I mean, they, they continue to support us, but they support us at the same level they always have. Um, and as everybody knows, gas is really expensive, insurance is really expensive, vehicle maintenance is really expensive. So we're trying to get uh, really creative about creating a, a model that will um, be less dependent on government funding, we'll uh, increase our fundraising capacity, we will increase the private services that we offer, um, and, and we're looking basically across the country to see how other agencies are surviving in the same environment. There's a lot of creative work out there, and we should be implementing some new stuff here in the next year or so. Because we want to grow. Yeah, and so some yeah. people who are interested in supporting your organization should mm -hmm. just give you a call and find out how they can either volunteer mm -hmm. or um, can make a you mm -hmm. know financial contribution. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it sounds like our, our you know. phone number is six one seven six two five one one nine one. You can call and talk to somebody. We do have um, volunteer positions open uh, for reservationists mm -hmm. specifically. A lot of admin around here. We are considering uh, having volunteer drivers. Mm -hmm. Um, for someone who would like to volunteer but doesn't want to be behind a desk, this is a way to be out on the road. Um, financially, we are always we always welcome contributions. You can you can call us up or you can contribute on the web at www.scmtransportation.org. Um, probably the best thing you could do is buy services from us. If you know somebody who um, maybe they've given up, uh, they they don't drive as much at night. Um, you can buy um, rides for them. We, we want to take people where they want to go when they're no longer able, able to drive. And opening an account for someone you care about is probably the best way to support SCM. Well, that's, um, that's wonderful information. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for You're joining welcome. us, Reed. You're welcome. This has been my pleasure. Our next segment is about the Volunteer Medical Escort Program of Somerville Cambridge Elder Services. Come down this way. The last story, we learned how SEM is filling an important need for transportation services in our community. But sometimes, just getting a ride is not enough. In many cases, older people who face physical or cognitive challenges need a little extra help. The Somerville Cambridge Elder Services Volunteer Escort Program is helping to fill the gap. Volunteers for the program accompany older people to medical appointments and other destinations. Some drive their own cars and others ride along in prearranged vans or taxis. Cambridge resident Sarah Premier is visually impaired and relies on the program to get to her many medical appointments. Active Aging caught up with Sarah and his volunteer John Morrison. Here's what they had to say about the program. John, can you tell me about how this program works? Well, we uh, they have vol several volunteer drivers, uh, and they make themselves available for uh, people like Sarah, Sarah and other handicapped or elderly people, and uh, who want uh, who have to go to various. Uh, medical appointments, doctors, hospitals, 
some go shopping, uh, <coughs> some, uh, some of them just go out for a ride, just to get out in the fresh air. And so you, you'll drive them all the way into Boston, is that right? Yeah, well, in fact, this morning I had a, a trip to Revere, so, uh, which was a, a woman taking her for a medical uh, treatment. So. And how long have you been a volunteer for the program? Uh, I think a little over a year for this program. Sarah, why is the program important to you? Well, number one, I'm a blind person. Uh, I need... The ride will take you just up to a certain point, but they like won't take you into the doctor's office or to the elevator. So it's important that I need somebody, uh, need, because you can't always rely on somebody that might be there that would take you up there. So that's why I need an escort. If you didn't have the escorts, um, the volunteer escorts, what do you think you'd do? Well, pray to God that somebody would be there. <laughs> Volunteers for the program come from all walks of life. They are students, professionals, and stay-at-home moms with a few extra hours and a desire to help older people. Many volunteers are retired individuals, like John, who would like to give back to the community. While medical appointments are given priority by the program, volunteers also take frail older people to other destinations such as the bank, post office, or to visit friends or relatives. With increasing numbers of older people living independently despite significant physical challenges, the demand for the escort program has grown rapidly. Somerville Cambridge Elder Services must recruit new volunteers on an ongoing basis to keep up with the growth in the program and is always looking for volunteers. Somerville Cambridge Elder Services Volunteer Director Janet Hand spearheads recruitment efforts. Hi, my name is Janet Hand. I'm Manager of Community Relations and Advocacy for Somerville Cambridge Elder Services. Under that umbrella, I am the Director of Volunteer Programs there, and one of our most important ones to the community and to healthier outcomes in the community is the Medical Escort Program. Currently, we're doing a recruitment drive trying to find people that have uh, available hours Monday through Friday, some um, to go along with clients to an appointment in arranged transportation, and some that are willing to drive people to medical appointments as well as to the grocery store or on little errands around town that they need to get done. Um, we are currently um, providing approximately 50 to 70 rides per month to seniors in the Somerville Cambridge area. I suspect that we could do much much more if we had more volunteers. Um, volunteers can help us in two different ways. As I said before we need drivers and we need people that have some time on their hands just to go along with them um, in prearranged transportation. The age group that we're dealing with um, is anywhere from 60 to 90, um, and some of them are very frail, and that's why they need an escort to get in and out of the hospital for a doctor's appointment or a blood test or an x-ray. Or some of them have some chronic medical conditions that prevent them from getting out and about on their own. So. Um, while volunteering is really a work of the heart, we do offer stipends for this program because we know that people have expenses to get back and forth to somebody's house, whether they take the bus or the train, or if they're driving, of course, then they have to um, fill up their car with gas. If you um, do become a driver for us, however, and you have to take somebody to some place like Mass General Hospital for an appointment, then the parking costs go to the client, and the client is well aware of that. They don't mind paying for it. They donate to the program. They're just appreciative of having somebody go with them to the doctor and having somebody to drive them, because after all, in our society, double-edged sword, we don't want seniors out there driving, but we're not really providing any transportation services for them to get around the way that they need to. And some of their medical appointments could be right here in town, some could be across the bridge at Mass Eye and Ear, some could be at Leahy Clinic. Um, it all depends on where their doctor sends them. So right now um, we don't have a vehicle, we have flyers up in the community and some people call me up and they're more than willing to come in and do the 
job for us, but they don't have a car. Um, in that case, I would ref make them a volunteer in the escort program um, to go along with prearranged transportation. But we do really need some drivers um, to get people um, to their out of town appointments, you know. Um, we've lost a couple of drivers in the last couple of months. Um, one passed away, one moved away. So we always are looking for no more volunteers that have, you know, as little as four hours a month, um, one day a month, one morning a month. If you have that available, we would really appreciate hearing from you at Somerville Cambridge Elder Services, 617-628. 2601. My name is Janet Hand. My extension is 3153 at the agency. We do have a screening process for all of our volunteers at SCES. <clears throat> Two of the requirements, of course, are <clears throat> a criminal records check. And if you're going to be a driver for the escort program, then the, we would ask to, um, for you to sign a form, a release form, so that we could check your driving record just to make sure that you know, we're not putting somebody behind the wheel that <laughs> is going to go out and get in an accident. We like to have um, people with clean driving records. And um, two references are required. Um, so it's basically a one-page application, um, a criminal records check, which is also just one page to fill out, and then the um, driver's release form for the uh, motor vehicle uh, check. So three pieces of paper. It usually takes about two weeks to get these, the paperwork back um, and the checks done with the government agencies. And then we match you up with a senior that needs some help and we get you an ID so that wherever you go, no one will ask you what you're doing with the senior. You'll be clearly identified as a Somerville Cambridge Elder Services volunteer with a picture ID. If you have a few hours a month to help seniors achieve healthier outcomes in their life, please do call me. I would love to have you. You don't have to commit for a week's time or several days a week. I have, senior, um, I have volunteers working for me one morning a month. So if you have one morning a month that you can contribute, please give me a call. To get a ride or learn more about volunteering for the SES Volunteer Escort Program, call Somerville Cambridge Elder Services at 617-628-2601. segment will be profiling John Morrison who drives for the Volunteer Medical Escort Program of Somerville Cambridge Elder Services. I'm uh, John Morrison and I'm closing in on 80. And, uh, what did you do? I have uh, four children, uh, three girls and a boy, all doing very well, yeah. and three, uh, three grandchildren. So. so how did you get I work for the Cambridge Somerville Elder Service. Uh, I do some work for the uh, St. Vincent de Paul, uh, uh, providing food for the, those that are in need. And not uh, that I plan on it, but you never know, I might need some of this service someday. And it's a great opportunity to meet people too, particularly elderly people like Sarah here today, who is a remarkable, <coughs> remarkable woman. And <coughs> she, she, with her handicap, she. Uh, She's so cheerful and understanding and very appreciative. And uh, it's, uh, it's just, well, meeting people and getting out, being occupied. I don't like sitting around the house all day, so uh, this gives me a chance to uh, accomplish both things, keeping busy and uh, meeting good people. Oh, yeah. No, I, I watch the, uh, the Patriots, and I get to the Red Sox, uh, a few times a year, so that also have a granddaughter, seven years old, who I enjoy very much. Pick her up from school and take her uh, on good days out to to play and so forth. So I uh, I keep busy. I was born in uh, actually in Somerville. Yeah. Oh, I grew up. Uh, well, my, before I went to school, I started schools in uh, Cambridge, actually. Uh, went to uh, Ringe Tech and then uh, went to, uh, graduated from Northeast in uh, 
few years after that. And then went through the School of Hard Knocks over the years. I worked for the uh, Museum of Fine Arts uh, close to 40 years. And I was the director of operations there. Well, back uh, when I got out of school, I was looking for a job. And a, a friend of mine worked there, and he suggested that I might be interested in there. And I started out uh, working on what they had, what they call a utility group. And it grew in and grew up. And bef when I left, I was the director of operations. So it was a very uh, enlightening and interesting career. I enjoyed it immensely. I learned a lot there, not only uh, about art, but about how to handle people and get people to, particularly when you get people working for you, how to get them to cooperate. And it, uh, it was a great experience. Uh, Van Gogh, uh, Rembrandt, uh, Renoir, you name it, we had them all. Well, you have, to walk, you have to walk through there every day anyway and check the gallery and make sure they there were no problems, uh, and uh, you got to know pretty much, uh, not that I'm an expert on art, but I certainly got to appreciate it more.